hello, uh, yeah, my name's Andy Whittle uh, and I'm working with uh, Rogers uh, UK, uh, hi fire. Uh, I started in 85 uh, in UK working for Goodman's, okay, and actually the Goodman's make the LS35A at that time, they, they also have a license. And then I worked for Celestian designing a guitar speaker, okay. Uh, then after my spell at Celestian I worked with Morden Short, and then after that I moved to Rogers in the early 90s, I was working with Rogers. Yeah, I think the hi-fi industry it, in the last sort of 10 years uh, was a little bit slow, okay, but the market never really, really go away. So Rogers never really been away, we've just been a, a little bit quiet and I always keep an association with Rogers. I worked with Rogers in the UK in uh, 1990 to 95 and I keep some communication and I've always been working in the audio industry in the UK. And then last year uh, I spoke to Powell uh, and I had a meeting with the Rogers people and we're looking to do some uh, reignite the business. So I said, okay, fine, we can work together. I come on board with Rogers and we start to remanufacture the product in the UK. Yeah, existingly, what we're going to do is we're not going to make new, new product. We're going to make a uh, new old product, okay? <laughs> so this is the, the classic 35A uh, and the uh, LS59, the BBC Studio Monitor, okay? And then uh, previously, we make the uh, E20A and E40A valve amplifier. So again, we pick this production and we make it in UK. So these are products we made before, classical products, and we give a minor revision update for better sound, a better quality, and we bring it back to the market. Yeah, this one so much, we have at the moment the 70th anniversary 35A. Next 35A and 59, the standard model, we start making in the UK, so we make in England, and that's basically how we position. You can hear that and you can feel it in the weight of the product, you look at the quality of the product, and of course, ultimately the sound, is really the best sound that we can get. Okay, so the drivers we make ourselves, all right? And then the crossover, again, we have a new PCB make in UK and the components for the inductors and the capacitors we make in UK, right? Well, we don't make the capacitors in UK, but the, the crossover inductors we make in UK. The original uh, crossover was set for 15 ohm, okay? Back in the, the days, uh, like the early 70s with the, the drive unit. And then what happened when, when they start making the transistor amplifier with more and more power, uh, it's the transistor amp's not so easy to drive the higher impedance. So they, they re-engineer the crossover to drop the impedance down to 11 ohm. Yeah. Okay. So what we do now is we find the audio file, they like to have the old version because the characteristic, the understanding is it is better sound. Okay. So it's okay, fine enough. So we put the original specification crossover back in. Okay. So it brings it back up to 15 ohm. Right. It's easy to drive and again, specifically suited for the tube amp. If you have the valve amplifier, once you get the higher impedance, the valve amplifier has an easy time and you find the music is more relaxing and more lyrical, yeah? And the dy dynamics are better, the amplifier has an easier time. Okay, a modern valve amplifier, well-designed output transformer is no problem, yeah? It, it can do it quite easily. So it just likes to see a slightly easier load and you, you get that back in the musicality, yeah? You find the music is more fluid because it's not straining the amplifier. Yeah, so we upgrade again the terminal uh, post to uh, better quality WBT. I think it's a German, yeah, German connector. Uh, I think it's by wire, yeah? We, we, we put the by wire on with a gold link, yeah? Again, I think it's predominantly rosewood, yeah? On those on those special fins. The, the cabinet is the standard birch ply with the damping and then the rosewood. Yes, yes, we have a license and unfortunately we have to pay a royalty each year. <laughs> so the more we sell, obviously, the more we have to pay the BBC because they need to, to get their license money. But that's that's obviously no problem. Yeah. So we, we allocate 70 pairs to each region, yeah, each yes. uh, a continent, maybe maybe Asia, Europe and US. Limited quantity. Yeah, once they're gone, they're gone. We don't make any more. Hopefully we ship, uh, we'll be shipping back to the Hong Kong dealer probably beginning of February. If we can get it in just before the Chinese New Year, we like to ship, yeah. <laughs> so we don't really cater for the mass market. It's not really where we're positioning the product, okay. But what we like to do is position it as a premium brand, okay. It's, it's still a very high respected brand with a very good performance, okay. So the best performance that we can get value for product value for money I should say sorry from the product so these were the products that were just coming through and we were you know make, manufacturing many uh, many 35As selling all over the world uh, I think Japan was the best market to be honest and again recording studios you know a lot of BBC studios around the world use Rogers monitor speakers okay so this is something we're keen to sort of bring back back to the market and, and reposition in the market so I've always been involved in the audio industry from day one for the last 30 35 years and we're looking forward to the next 35 <laughs> Thank you. Thanks okay, so all right. Thank, Thank you very much. much.